This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by super lightweight Robbie Davis Jr. Robbie, how you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good. You all right? I'm good, thank you. Um, before we get into kind of the details, what occurred in your last fight, because I know that's a, a bone of contention, how is the, the ankle now? Um, still in cast at the moment, but uh, luckily enough on the day... Um, there was cancellations on the day, so I ended up getting an operation there and then. Uh, well, I went home, and then a couple of hours later, he rang me and said, if you want to come back up now, we'll do an operation. So rather than sit around and wait eight weeks, I got it sorted straight away. So get me cast off him in about four or five days and start physio straight away, which is quite a quick turnaround considering. What was the the nature of the injury? Like, how severe was it? What what did they tell you at the hospital? My fibula snapped in two, and my my tendons and my um, my tendons on the other side and my ankle on the inside where it bent over, and my ligaments they were all torn because of like obviously the way it bent backwards, and on the inside on the outside of my leg was a uh, my fibula just snapped in two. Jesus. And have you ever had anything like that before? Or was it just a complete freak injury? The only uh, the only bones I've ever broken, I mean, my knuckles, I've never broken any other bone in my body. So the weirdest thing ever, like never had no injuries where I had no injury going into the fight with my ankles or anything like that. It's the maddest freak accident ever. Let's talk about the fight itself. Uh, obviously enjoyed a really good first round. Uh, got the knockdown against you in the second round and, and then obviously disaster struck in the third. What are your reflections on the fight as a whole? Like in the first round, I felt like I was cruising, couldn't miss with the right hand. Second round, similar again, just going through the motions, warming into it. And probably got too lackadaisy a bit, like too, too complacent, too comfortable. And then he like threw a... Uh, he threw a southpaw backhand and then just swinged a big looping right hook. And it clipped me as I was like trying to pull out. That's why I like shot to the floor rather than got wobbled or anything. I just shot straight to the floor, my boom. But then more out of like embarrassment because I got it with that shot. I just like jumped up straight away. Like I wasn't like buzzed or anything like that. And while the refs count me, I even look at him in the opposite corner and laugh and go like, good shot. Do you know what I mean? And then as we get, he goes like, all right, go back, sense the ring. The bell went. Yeah. And when we walk, I want to walk back to the corner. Shane, like I'm already in my corner, and Shane, I just turned around and Shane goes, "You're right." I was like, "Shouldn't have got it with that." And then Shane went, "How's your ankle?" And I was like, "My ankle," because apparently the way where where they were sitting, they were like right on top of it. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, "Nah, I'm sad." And then I sat down on my stool. He's giving me just instructions, telling me what to do, keep it simple, one, two shots, keep moving to my right, stuff like that. And then next minute, as he's in the middle of talking, I feel like this hot warm just like start wrapping around my ankle. And I went, well, I can feel that now. And he went, is it all right? And then next thing, you did the clapper to come out for the next round. So then I stood, stood up off my stool and he goes to me, is it all right? He gives me a swig of water. And I went to him, I'll tell you now. And then I literally walk out to the middle of the ring. Me and Foley are like sword fencing a little bit. Like he throws a jab and I glance at a bit and then he like he steps in he steps in with just like he's not, he's not even like like he's trying to hit me, he's just like winging a right hook like a slow one. And as I step back, my leg just like crumbled underneath me. And even though like pain didn't like rush through my body, I literally turned over to the corner to Shane and just went, It's broke, it's broke, like a new straight away. And then next minute I'm, I turn over and Max McDonald's counting me. And like, he, regardless of what what has happened, if someone just falls over in the ring, you don't start counting them. Do you know what I mean? And it, even if you see on the footage, it's not like he's in a weird angle, like to not see it. He stands him right in front of it, and like you can see, no punch lands. with a with a good three steps away from each other when it happens. Like we're not like entangled or anything. So he starts counting me, and like just like out of pride a bit. I jumped up, like, on the one leg. Jumped <laughs> up and just, like, started talking. I was like, well, what are you counting for? And then at this point, Max McDonald's still staring at me, but Shane and that are waving the towel. 
from when I've said to them, like when I'm lying on the floor, I said this broke, broke Shane have already started waving to her. And Max McDonald's like still counting. I'm like, what are you counting for? <laughs> and then at this point, um, everyone's running in the ring now and grab me to like help me support. And then um, I was just like, what the, f- what the fuck is going on here? So what do you feel he should have done, the referee? Kind of taken you over to your corner rather than begin a count and, and just assess what was going on? Well, it's just like if someone falls over in the ring, you pick them up, wipe the gloves, and then you just go again, don't you? Yeah. He didn't do any, he didn't do any of that. He didn't even it's like it didn't even come to his head. He just like I fell over and he don't know what was going through his head, he just started counting. I was like, what are you counting for? Like it's not even like he glanced me or hit me shoulder or anything. Like he was nowhere near me. Completely just hit fresh air. Yeah. So it was frust- it was frustrating in that sense. And then like, and then like after it, now you're reading articles that I was knocked out. I was dropped again in the third round. I was knocked out. I'm like, what? Do you know what I mean? So it's fr- it is it's frustrating. What would you like to see happen now? Because the the reports you talk about can't. I mean, they can be amended, but people have already read them. But is it the official result that you'd like to see change? Yeah, definitely. Like, I was, re- I was retired by my corner because my ankle was snapped. I wasn't knocked out. I wasn't knocked down. Do you know what I mean? Pe- like, you have some people are arguing on his defence, saying, like, yeah, but he knocked you down the round before. So if someone knocks you down in round two, you can count them out in round five. <laughs> no. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't work like that. If they look at it that way, in round two, I beat the count with a broken leg in four or five seconds. Do you know what I mean? Look at it that way, rather than saying like, oh, but he got you the round before. How frustrating is it? Not just the, the results been put in the record books that way, but no disrespect to Dara Foley, but someone you believe you can beat fairly comfortably now has that win against you officially on the record. Yeah, definitely. Like, I couldn't take it in exactly with what he was saying, but because I'm like frustrated sitting on a stool, my legs broke. But he come over to me in the ring, and he was like, "Wow, feel a, feel a swat there." I've just been celebrating and all that. Didn't realize you broke your ankle. And I was just like, "Yeah, yes, yeah, sounds like I'm. I'm not really taking it in what he's saying." He went, he said something along the lines of, "You didn't have to fight me, but if you, if you want the rematch, I'll have it." Do you know what I mean? And at this point, I'm not even like, I'm not even taking it in like as if, as if to go, "Yeah, yeah, we'll do the rematch." I was just like. My fucking legs broke. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not like taking in what he's saying. Do you know what I mean? But then it uh, now like obviously everything's sorted and stuff like that. Like that is something I would want. And if he's a man of his word, then let's do it. Do you know what I mean? It's not like because of this because of the the Pacific professor that's done my leg and like I've had it done so quick. The turnaround is going to be quicker than people think, especially that I'm I'm a, I'm a healthy, well living lad. Do you know what I mean? I'm not like someone that sits around binging or whatever. And so it's not like he's going to have to wait till the end of the year. Like I'll be back quick. Do you know what I mean? But it's just got everyone everyone around me for that to happen. It's got to stick by me. They've got to they've got to offer me the rematch. He's got to be willing to have the rematch. And in the meantime, he's got to not fight someone else where he could potentially get beat, and then. It messes the rematch up. Do you know what I mean? How? Um, what is your situation promotionally then at the moment? Because you said about someone making the rematch. Are you are you with Matchroom still? What's the situation? Yeah, well, I was contracted with Matchroom before this fight. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've been contracted with Matchroom since two thousand eighteen. All my fights. So, um, but just got to see what the scenario is. Obviously, me like broke in the ring. It wasn't like I got banged out. Everyone was there. They seen what it was. Like listen, if he if he would have banged me out, listen, and and that was and that's how it really did end. Then this would be that'd be it for me. Do you know what I mean? You'd never see me in a ring if I got knocked out by him. Do you know what I mean? If I got beat by him legitly, you probably wouldn't have seen me in the ring again. But because of the circumstances, I'm just I just want the rematch really. And have you spoken to Eddie or to someone at Matchroom since the fight just to assess what the landscape is? Not in not in terms of the landscape of what's next or anything like that. Like Eddie, Frank, all of them. Most of the backroom staff, everyone's messaged me, just making sure I'm all right and giving me well wishes and all stuff like that. But in for now, it's just more like how um how I and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? 
Yeah. Not on, not on, not on life looking forward because no one really knows how long it's going to be till I'm better. Do you know what I mean? And you've said about uh, the surgeon that worked on your leg because of how good they are, you could be back a lot quick, quicker than most people would imagine. What is the prognosis? How long until you can be at least in the gym? One second. Sorry. <laughs> One second. Sorry. <laughs> Get it over there. He's talking. Let's go. Let's go. I'll be back now. That's nice. Um, go on. Yeah, so what is the prognosis? Like, how long until you can be back putting weight on it, basically? So you can at least do, you know, walking around, starting to jog and that kind of thing. Um, cast comes off uh, in about five days and the, the professor wants me to start weight bed and then he's got a... Uh, he's worked with, like, Liverpool players, stuff like that on these sort of injuries. He's got a rehabilitation place where, which is only by Liverpool Airport, which is not too far away from me, so... Hopefully, I can get in there as soon as possible. And he's like going to put my name forward to start doing some rehab in there straight away. And although this isn't the way you would have wanted kind of some extended time off, have any part of you been able to enjoy it, spending more time at home with the family? Not really. I'm stuck on the couch, foot up, not non weight bearing process where I've got to just like not start like getting out and about. I'm nearly like, I haven't seen no friends, plans, what I've... Because you've got to remember, the fight at the back end of last year, the shows weren't happening because of cancellations. I went like 10 months with no fight. So because of the way I am, I stayed in the gym continuously. So I didn't wasn't really enjoying myself, wasn't seeing friends, didn't go out on holiday with my missus or anything like that. So I was planning after this fight, like doing a little bit more things, like having a little bit of a blowout. But now because of this, obviously... And I'm a bit OCD with everything in my life. So I'm like, I haven't got time to do all them things that I wanted to do. Now my main priority is recovery. And you don't want to stack the weight on either, I suppose. Do you know what? I'm not I'm not I'm not that bad like I used to be when I was younger and I just eat everything like like I was on death's door. <laughs> where now I'm I'm not really like that. Like I'm a bit of a um, like everyone in our gym would say I've got body dysmorphia. Like, I always want to be in shape. Do you know what I mean? It's probably not a bad thing to have, is it, as a boxer? Yeah. I suppose. Like, not, not belittling anyone who's got it in life, but, you know. Yeah, that's that's just where I am at the moment anyway. Well, obviously, I wish you all the best. I'm sure everyone watching this will feel the same. Is there anything kind of fans and stuff can do to, to help while you're, you know, on the recovery trail, to, you know, put putting some pressure perhaps on social media about getting the result changed, for example? You know what, like, I've been, like my team have been on back and forth with the board. Me, myself, I've been back and forth with the board. But I've spoke. Like, I'm not one of them people. I wouldn't make a case if I didn't think I have a leg to stand on. So I spoke to. So I spoke no to people. About, what a what a coincidence that was. There, that was <laughs> that was a bad thing to say. But I'm like, I've spoke to members of the board, and they've been in touch with a star referees who obviously don't want to wish to be named because of the circumstances. They don't want to go against things, and um, they're all in agreement with me, saying like, should have just been retired. If someone gets a cut within four rounds, it just goes to a no contest. And I'm saying, listen, you don't. I'm not saying I didn't lose. But I'm saying I never got knocked out. That's that's my point. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it, I was retired by my corner. If Marcus McDonald wouldn't have, wouldn't have counted when he shouldn't have, and then looked at my corner, we were waving the towel instantly. About ten seconds into the round, it was I was reca- retired by my corner to a snapped ankle. Yeah. There's there's no other or way they'd to have look retired at. you in the interval between rounds as well. Same thing. Exactly the same thing. Do you know what I mean? You'd have been retired, and um. So that's one thing, and the other thing is, is like I've heard rumours of um, Foley possibly trying to boil himself down to like one hundred thirty-seven pounds to take a fight on the Taylor card, and I'm not messing. You should have seen him at I'm not. I'm not taking. I'm not taking that on away from. Him, but you should have seen him on them scales at one hundred forty pounds. He he was he was dry. He was very dry. Three pounds is going to be another three two three pounds is going to be dangerous. Mm. So rather than rush into something like that to get himself on the Kate Taylor bill and then potentially get himself knocked out because he's so light at the weight. Why not just wait and do the right thing and fight me because you said it to me. And I think 
people would rather see that because of the way the way it ended. Because the the way they'd look at it is like, I was boxing his head off, but he did drop me. Do you know what I mean? But then it was finished by my ankle snapping. So I think a, if we a return in that fight would be potentially bigger than any other fight he'd get in the time being. Do you know what I mean? It's a shame he won't be ready for the Katie Taylor card. Obviously, there's no chance, but you know that that'd be ideal. You've done it, you know, nearer you, and then the second time would be nearer him, like over in Ireland. Well, I wouldn't honestly like because I've done them a few rounds with him now. I am so confident. Like I'd fight him in his back garden. Do you know what I mean? Like that's how confident I am now. Like there's no way he could beat me. Like he was too slow on his feet. He he might have knocked me down, but he's he's not like a. a, a Unbelievable banger where I'd be like, whoa, can't get it by him. Um, and I, I might be at the case to fight myself anyway because Scott needs on it. So, yeah, of course. So, all right, well, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, obviously, best wishes in your recovery and maybe let's catch up again in a couple of weeks and, and see where you're at. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, I'm doing jump, jumping jacks next time <laughs> I speak to you. <laughs> fingers crossed. I, I know I won't be, but. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I really appreciate it. And yeah, take care. Try, try and enjoy some of the time with your family. I know it's hard because you're, you're stuck on the sofa, but the cast off in a few days, like you said. So, you know, enjoy it if you just can. Like, just like just like them when, when my daughter come over to me, like she's been doing that like since I come home. And like, because she just sees me foot in a cast, she's going, oh, daddy's foot's sick. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's, it's horrible, do you know what I mean? Only five more days, mate. Five more days. Yeah, that's it. Good stuff. Oh. Right, mate. Take care. I'll speak to you soon. Right. Nice one for that. Anyway, appreciate it. Cheers, mate. Anytime.